Hey folks, it's Frith Guy here, how you doing? Welcome back to Banished. Just a quick recap on what we were doing and what our plans were. We've built a new radial arm out here where we've got a herbalist, we have a hunting cabin, we've got a storage barn up there, we've got a forester's lodge and we have a gatherer's hut. We've got four houses down here as well in order to house all the people who are working there. Um, we've got our fields, we've moved them out here with a storage barn beside them and I have just laid down a... Excuse me a minute. Right. I have also just laid down a marketplace here, which we will start letting them... They'll start building that one up, and that marketplace is actually going to be very, very useful. Now, the one mistake that we did make was I put my four houses down here, the other side of these, and I should have placed the houses up here so that they weren't directly beside these. Um, but... They were also within range of the market up here. So I could demolish these houses and rebuild them up here. But I'm really loath to do that. So I'm going to live with it this time. And then next time when we move out again, when we expand further, we'll just remember that. And then next time we'll um, move them. We'll put them in sort of the right place. Because I'd also like to do a radial arm. Um, something similar all the way up here way out of town and we'll put a storage yard and stuff like that but we, we, we're not going to worry about that at the moment today I want to make sure that we get everything through so let's move our, back, our simulation back up to five times speed because that's what we've been working on for a while now we've got some space in the middle the marketplace is building that's um, it's still waiting on 40 iron there and then we have this one here the iron mine now we've got three people that don't currently have jobs and I think I've actually assigned all of those as miners. So let's just take a quick look and we'll see. I got um, the laborers there. Uh, farmers, we've got six, that's fine. Miners, three. So it is the three miners that we've got assigned. And once this one here, well, this is now built. So we are getting iron out of here. Now we can get coal later on um, and we'll use coal. We'll do a coal mine in order to assist the blacksmith because then the blacksmith can start making steel tools. Uh, they are stronger, they last longer, they're also worth a lot more money and we can start selling them through a trader. So we've now got a constant supply of iron and the first iron that's going to be used is going to be right here in the marketplace. We've got a constant supply of stone coming in from that quarry there. So everything is working exactly as intended and you know we could just stop right here. We've done it successfully, we've given them everything they want, job done right? Not quite. There's quite a few extra things that we want to do. So, once we've got the market in place... Now, I can't remember if I had disasters enabled on this one or not. We've got a well there, just in case there is a fire. Um, I genuinely don't know if I've got disasters in enabled. I don't think that I do. I think that I left it without disasters. Uh, show help and reference material, no. I don't know if there's any way for me to actually find out if I enabled disasters right from the beginning. Let me have a look around the menus a minute and see if I can find out. Okay, I managed to find out. What you do is you click down there on options and then you go to map and it tells you everything you need to know. We had disasters switched off on this one so we don't actually need to worry about major diseases. Now you can get diseases but they're not going to go and kill everybody and that's kind of the, the crucial point there. I mean it's still a good idea to sort of pay a little bit of attention to disasters but we're not going to get the tornado come whizzing through, demolish all of our storage and cause the entire town to starve to death. Um, I, which I always felt was a little bit drastic. I always felt that was just a little bit over the top. The fact that your entire town could just be randomly destroyed like that. Um, I mean, yes, I know there are places where there are tornadoes, but you generally you're prepared for them. You, you, you're going to be um, expecting them, right? Our temperatures up here, current weather and temperature. We can actually change that, and that is one thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change it to Celsius because I understand the Celsius. I understand Celsius. I don't understand the others. So. Um, Let's go OK and resume. There we go. So it's 25 degrees. Now I understand what the temperature is. And we've had someone die. Uh, Camelith the stone cutter was crushed by a rock. Now the stone cutters and the mines, um, the, the quarry and the mines, are the two most dangerous jobs. You're more likely to have people die in those than you are anywhere else. So we just got to be aware of that. So we've just lost one of our stone cutters. I don't know if that actually means if they automatically assign someone else to the job or not. Um... Let's go and check how many stone cutters. We, no, we still got three stone cutters. So we lost a laborer and we gained, um, and one of them became a stone cutter instead. 
So this one is slowly building. We've only got five iron. Everything else is done. We've got the stone, and the stone is now starting to accumulate here in this storage yard. Uh, we've got, well, six stone at the moment, so it's, it's accumulating very, very slowly. We've got a little bit of stone up there as well. Everything that we sent the people out to gather up has all been gathered. There's a um, all of this area down here. This is now being worked by the Forester's Lodge. So there's nothing to do with us. We don't need to worry about it. We've got some iron over here. And I think there's another couple of bits of iron over here as well. So we could actually send some people out there because we don't have any other building projects at the moment. There are some that I'd like to get done today. We've got our schoolhouse in place. We've got a well. I'd like to build a hospital for when we do have some diseases turn up. I want a town hall, which is really useful. Um, we want a chapel so that people can go to worship. And it means that they end up, it, it improves their happiness level, which is something that you do actually want to work at doing. You do want to increase their happiness level. I don't think there is actually a um, limit on where and how you place the chapel. I think you just kind of plonk it down somewhere. Um, and then people will go to it from wherever they might be. Um, we can put it down there. It's a little bit just too rough on the, um, the ground level there, unfortunately. As one thing I don't like is the fact that you can't... The people don't level out more areas of the ground. I'm really hoping there's like a banished version 2 where uh, some of these small niggles of the game are kind of ironed out a little bit. It would be absolutely incredible if that were, were to happen. But no, we're not going to invest the time and effort into a chapel just yet. A cemetery, however, a cemetery is quite important to the people. It allows them somewhere to go to grieve for lost loved ones, and it does make a significant difference to the happiness and well-being of the people. And the happiness and well-being, um, it prevents citizens from becoming sad when the elders die. Now, the moment our happiness level, the average level, is four and a half stars, which is pretty good. The average health is not great. We could do with um, taking measures to improve that, and building a hospital is one of those things. Um, well, that's mainly, mainly for healing disease. You need a varied diet. If they can all have a varied diet, that's actually really good, and it helps with health. Um, we could also try getting them some warmer coats. Um, but we'll, we're going to build a cemetery. That is one thing that I would like to build our citizens here, and I'm not quite sure where the best place to build it is. I think we'll do it down over here somewhere. Um... I don't want it too... You don't want it too big, because it does use up an awful lot of resources. Cemetery cannot be placed in this location, so we could put one there, an 8x9. So let's go 8x10. I'm going to rotate it round so that the gates are out there on the road, and I'm going to put a cemetery there. So there is a place that they can go to grieve for their lost loved ones if they need to, and that does actually improve it it does it helps them a lot it does um it improves happiness and it does help people so they will slowly put the stone in there and they will build that one and that will be done town hall that's the important one that is the one that we want and we're going to plonk that one right here in the middle it's not going to be very far away from where our traders are going to be and our traders are going to be on this side of the river we'll be getting them set up very soon with 11 of 40 iron so i'm gonna actually i'm gonna set out Set, I'm going to set them the task of gathering some more iron. Now, we've got a lot further down here. There is a lot down there. Reserve of stone is low. That's fine. That's not a problem. Uh, but if we go here and we go to collect iron, there is none down there. But on this area here, right, we've got some iron there. There's a patch of iron right there. I don't know if we've got any more iron. There's some over the river, but we can't reach that yet. If we want to reach that eventually, we're going to have to build a bridge across the river on this side. So there's no iron up there. And there's none there. Right, there's... Actually, there's a lot of iron here. There's a big patch of iron right there. But that's quite a long way from the village. So I've got a little bit there that I'll let them get. And... Right, we've already cleared all of the iron over there. And I cleared all the iron over here. I don't really want to go any further than that at the moment because it is such a long way for them to travel and it takes them such a long time to be able to get there. Uh, right. Oh, food limit 5,000. We want to increase the food limit very quickly because otherwise they're not going to have... They, we've lost the yield anyway, but um, that's something you do need to watch out for is that food limit is quite vital, actually. It does make a significant impact. They will stop storing the food and it can cause you problems. You have the food limits. You have the limits on all of the items there to start with because you... Um, you'll eventually sort of start producing so much stuff that you can flood the storage areas with one particular type of food or uh, one particular type of item 
and then there's nothing you can't put anything else in there it's just no room for anything at all we do have a shortage of tools again we've got eight people without tools and this is going to be a problem i don't think it's a problem at the moment so long as they can get this iron back and used that's why i haven't actually placed down the town hall yet we're still waiting on this we're gonna have oh we've got three more stone got uh, iron gone in so we're waiting for 19 pieces of iron to go in there that one's producing it and we've got iron over here that is being gathered up by the labor force which now that we've got farmers the labor force is actually going to be a bit more enthusiastic i'm actually thinking i don't know i'm, I'm wondering if maybe i should collect this iron down here it's a long way to go that up there or if we go actually we're going to go up here we're going to go for the iron here i think it's actually going to be quicker and easier for them to gather the iron there. there's a huge great big patch of it there uh, that particular amount that quantity of iron up there is going to be enough i think to be able to fill this one up um coats aren't an issue we don't have we don't have a shortage of coats we've got 43 hide coats there we can go and take a look at all of the items show limits placed on resource production that's the one i want i'm going to bring that one down here in a minute so we've got logs is at 200 i'm going to increase that i want to allow for 500 logs and 500 stone and 500 iron i allow for 500 of each to be stored which does actually mean i'm going to need big storage yards storage yards are easy they don't cost anything to make fuel as well i'm going to allow the um the log cutter to make up to 500 of those textiles and so on so tools we will allow a backlog of 250 tools food i'm going to go all the way up to seven and a half thousand for now we don't need more than that at the moment um herbs we go for 200 of herbs and clothes i'll go 100 and, actually i'm going to go 250 on clothes as well take them all the way up so we got lots of store we got lots of limits now all reached this one has we've acquired all of the iron we've got all the iron that we need so they are oh we've got a bit there they haven't even started on the piece of iron at the top there so we've got 10 people that don't have any tools so this blacksmith here is currently waiting on iron and as soon as the blacksmith can start working he will then start flooding the tools back in and that is going to make a significant improvement in the situation that's the bit that we're waiting on as soon as that is done we will then be able to go on to the next. The last, the iron down there is about to be brought up. I suspect that is going to be taken by this person here. They're going to gather it up, I hope, if everything goes well. Yes, they've gathered that. Someone else has come out as well. They're going to mine that and they're going to take that. So that person there is going to go, I hope, to the blacksmith. If I can click, there we go. Laborer Isabel is working and her inventory if i can get her to stop moving just a second she's got iron and oh she's dropped it into the storage yard here so we got four iron here in that storage yard which means well the blacksmith has now got something he's got at least one he's got one log up there now because i went and changed the parameters for the fuel i actually think i made a mistake on that if i go back on here i'm going to lower fuel down to 300 rather than 500 so that he doesn't immediately use up all of the spare firewood i think having 300 is okay but we don't want him to use up all of the spare firewood because otherwise the blacksmith like now is not going to have enough logs now hopefully i mean there's logs here in storage there's 110 logs in storage so there's enough to keep them busy but not we're not flooded with them we're not absolutely flooded with them now i was told that you could do a 15 by 10 i think it was field um i don't if i got 15 by 10 i think i can someone did say the actual number that you can use for um like assigning your, your farmers how much one person can work um but i have found that i tend to I, I like to give them slightly more than that in order to allow them to actually get the food in properly um without having any problems right so we've got our cemetery here zero of 18 graves are being used in there at the moment that's somewhere that people can go and their health has improved i wonder if the average health of the citizens is anything to do with the graveyards unless it's the other way around unless that is actually the health there and that is actually the um the happiness level i'm not quite sure that's something that's worth investigating later today. So the blacksmith is now making tools. We're up to 13 people that currently don't have any. So 
is all down to this blacksmith. He is going to have... Right, oh, he's gone down to 12. So people are now getting their tools. That's brilliant. 11. So yes, it, it is working now. They're starting to get tools. We've got a whole load of iron up here. And here come our workforce. They are having to go all the way around. I didn't actually think that. I thought they would be able... I thought they'd be able to go up over the top here, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, so they're going to have to keep walking around in circles unless we can build a um, tunnel right through there. We will eventually build a tunnel through there, but we can't at the moment. So, let's find some workers to assign in here. We've got three laborers. So, at the moment, we want the vendor there. Vendors collect and distribute goods at a marketplace. I'm going to get two of those, which means we've only got one labourer, but I'm hoping that fairly soon someone will make it through school and be able to help us out. So, we've got these four houses down here. They're getting fairly full. Um, I'm thinking that we could actually do some more houses. Because all of these houses have got, like, the couples and kids in, so they're not going to have many more kids, a lot of these. The older couples don't have kids. And, yeah, I, I think that we if we could build a few more houses now, it would also provide extra people for their jobs. It does take a while when you build the houses. You do have to wait a little while for the um, various bits and pieces. Um, you know, people to move in, and then they have the children, and then the children go up, they go to school, and then they come out of school. So it does take a while to have any effect. You've got to kind of... You've got to keep that in mind at all times you've got a long-term plan for these things you do have to be aware of the long-term planning right at the moment we've got one storage barn here with nothing in it and we've got a storage yard here that's not really being none of these yards being used very much so we don't need more storage yards now but we may actually turn that area there into storage yard i'm going to build some more houses now no actually no there was one else other thing i want to do first town hall i want the town hall that's going to be here right in the middle i'm going to put that slap bang in the middle there um which way round should i put it I don't know whether to put it facing towards that way or facing to i'm going to face it towards the marketplace i think Move it over one there just like that so we have our town hall being built we need 124 stone and 48 iron. That is going to take quite a bit of doing. The other thing that I want is a couple more houses. So we'll go here and stone houses. Turn that one round. And I'm going to put four more stone houses. These stone houses over here are within range of the marketplace. So long as they're within range of the marketplace, everything is good. Let me just... Um, I mean, you do kind of... You also want them within range of jobs. So I'm going to put a couple here so they're within range of these jobs. The farmers are within range of those jobs. Um, but by putting these houses here, I'm going to be putting traders on this side of the river. And those houses are going to be reasonably close to where those jobs are. That I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy for them to um, sort of provide the... Be, I'm quite happy for these to be places for this uh, the new workforce to, to live and eat and so on. Um, the marketplace is right there, so they just go to that one. Look at that. It's already starting to fill up. It's got all of these items here. People then go straight to the marketplace. They grab what they need and they go home. They don't have to go off to the storage areas. Um, the market is the one that does that. It goes to all the different storage places and it gets everything it needs, brings it to this one central location. It also gets something of all of them. You, you get bits of everything in here and then the people get a more varied... Uh, diet and so on. This, these have got cabbage and fish and they've got the firewood in there as well. These guys here, they've got uh, cabbage, peppers, fish and firewood. So they, they, they've got a bit of everything. They're, they're not wanting for any items. Um, I, I would love to see Banished version 2 where you've got to provide more things for the people. I mean, we, we provide like types of uh, food, clothing, tools, but like some... Like, uh, pottery and various different types of clothing if you had to provide multiple types of clothing rather than just one and um, like a whole load I love these type of resource management games like this with slightly different edges to them the various different ways that you do it um, and trying to achieve the perfect balance as you work your way through it's, I, I just really really love the challenge of it it's to me it is one it's one of my favorite types of games I mean well to be fair I've got a lot of favorite types of games um I'm not sure how much we need. Right, the reserve of tools is low. Yes, well, we know the reserve of tools is low and it's going to stay low for a while. Um, how are we doing up here? We've still got all of this iron up here. Let's work. The, the people are slowly dealing with that. 
At the moment, we've got 16 of 48 iron and 46 stone. All the stone is out. The logs are done. Logs are taken care of. And then we've got all of these houses over here. I am wondering if it might be better to postpone the building of this one and build those houses first, then go back to this one. That's what we'll do. I'm going to press pause. And we'll build these first. So I'm actually going to increase simulation speed now. We're going to go up to 10 times. And just allow them to run through their daily jobs. We've got a constant supply of food. We've got supply of stone and iron. The only issue that we have that we've const constantly got to monitor is the fact that we are low on tools. Our tools are very serious. We've got eight spare tools here at the moment. We've got now six. Um, we do have this up here being worked. We've got some workers coming in, getting some more. So we've got this supply of iron being brought in which should be enough for the blacksmith to just get a little bit as well as building these houses down here. Now this is where all the stone is going to go. We've got some stone. Shouldn't be anything going on these lower ones. It should all be on these two here first. Uh, well that one there first actually. So we've got 10 stone there and we've got 6 of 10 iron. So the iron is coming up. The stone is literally just going to be moving across the road from here and as soon as we start to get a few more workers we can actually increase the number of people working in the quarry, which would be very, very useful. What are we on now? Three laborers. We've got two vendors. I got three stone cutters and three miners. I think we'll keep. I think we'll keep that on three. I don't want to. I don't want to flood uh, the stone cutters because we're going to. You know, removing the laborers is not very good. It's, it's kind of very counterproductive. You do have to make sure you maintain a a force of laborers, but we could. Go and um, put out orders to gather up this stone over here. We've got the iron is currently being gathered. That's fine. But if we got this stone over here coming in as extras, I know that I am pulling in quite a lot of stone here. It's a big order for it. Um, but I think we'll manage to get through that okay. I'm confident in our abilities. And we've also got a big chunk of stone up here that we can gather as well. I suppose would actually be closer. I think they'll still go for this first. They will prioritize the iron. But then we've got the stone down here that they can move on to and start bringing in very rapidly. Oh, no. Ah, I see. So it does look like they're bringing in a bit of the stone as well. They're bringing in both. They're, sort of, they're going for whichever's needed, which, again, is something I quite like. That's the detail that I particularly like. So iron on here. We're 8 of 10. we got one house that's finished already. We just need two more iron in there. Now, we do have the iron mine it is working away. It is actually producing iron. And there's iron outside it. It's just sat there waiting. So hopefully somebody will be able to come along and get some soon. I mean, having the storage yard up there is a little bit away from the iron mine. It might be better if we were to put it a bit closer so they wouldn't have so far to go. Just see what the tracking is like. If you go onto here and then you go to the root finding thing here. Click on there. Oh, it only shows the houses. But we know that those guys live close by so we don't... Um, there's no... No long distances to travel. If you've got them traveling really long distances, that can cause you some serious problems. So there's another one that's done. Now we've got four more houses here. We've got um, iron going in there. Tools are down to three. Uh, one person is out of tools, but we've got two in storage. So they should be able to come back and um, reacquire one. We've got more iron up here coming back in. i got loads. There is absolutely masses of it. Uh, we're still going. We're still waiting on... Oh, no, it's this side we're working. So we want two more on there. We've got one person without a tool, but we now have five tools. So running this on the 10 times simulation speed has meant that um, we're able to keep everything going. We've got a house here that is currently short of supplies. So they need firewood, and we don't actually have any firewood here. There's no firewood in the market, and there's no firewood over here either. This person doesn't have any logs. That is a problem. Logs are currently, all spare logs are currently being put into these houses here, which means that we don't have a supply of timber, so we've got no, um, no firewood to keep these poor folks warm. Which could be a little bit of an issue, could be a problem. So what we'll do is we'll put a small order for timber over here. I know that we've got our forestry guys there working industriously, but we do still want a small order for timber. So if I grab those trees there, and I will also grab just a few of these over here, that should be more than enough. Could just bring in a little bit extra. That should just be enough to sort of cover the construction over here and give the um, the woodcutter over here something to work on, and he can start rebuilding his stocks. Once those stocks are rebuilt, 
no problems at all. And so you just you do kind of just like put out these little orders every now and then, just to like give a little push in the right direction for a few different crops. It does really seem to make a difference. It does seem to help out quite a bit. Um, we've got a herbalist over here. She does. Um, this is medicines. This helps people. They come to her. Apparently, I thought that um, this area was like the area that she covered, but apparently the people they wherever they are, they just go to her when they're feeling ill. Um, they will get some herbs in order to cure whatever illnesses they might have, and then they go on about their um, daily life. And then you've got the gatherers up there. She's the one that gathers roots and things like that, which um, all help with... Uh, that's, that all goes towards the food uh, up here. You've got mushrooms, which come from her. Onions come from her. And uh, there's nothing else in... Oh, berries as well. They come from her. And I think there's roots as well, that turns up. I think it's just those four. Right, our houses over here, we've got... Iron is done on there. Iron is nearly done on there. So we've got 13 more iron needed in order to complete these two houses. The timber situation is doing fairly well, actually. We've got a lot of logs have just come in. That was that burst of timber that we've just sent them out to get over here. So we may need to get a little bit more. Food is absolute max. We've got 7,500 food in storage. I'm going to increase that yet again. I'm, I, you never want to run out of food. You've always got to be careful that you don't run out of food. So I'm going to increase total food all the way up to 10,000 so that we've got more than enough food. The reason being... If I increase that now, we've then got a reserve for when our new population here, and we're going to get a population boost fairly soon. With all these houses I'm building, we've got some of these have only got one person in, but when that old person dies there, that old miner, when they die, oh, they've already done it. They, they've actually, the miner may have moved somewhere else, and they do it sometimes, unless they just changed jobs or moved or something. But yeah, occasionally, like, the, the, an old person will die, and so a younger person will take their place. Um, I think that's what just happened there, actually. And so then you've got two people have moved into the house. Um, and they're now very happy. So Virgio is a builder, living all on their lonesome. And they probably won't have anyone move in with them. They will just stay on their own in that house, which is kind of a choke point. You do get that occasionally, and it is a bit of a nuisance. You want the, you want the couples moving into the houses, and then they can start having the children. And it's kind of the whole point. Is you, you, so occasionally, if you do find it yourself, you're running into a bit of a choke and you don't want to be rebuilding houses. Um, or you don't want to be building more houses. You do. I do sometimes actually just go and knock down a few houses that have got just one occupant and then rebuild them again. And I have found that that has worked in the past. It is one way of getting around it. Uh, 10 of 10 iron, 10 of 10 iron. Right, so the iron is now completely taken care of and so is the logs. Both of them, the logs are taken care of. It's only stone we're waiting on, and we're not too concerned about stone. So this person is now able, the stone, the woodcutter over here is now um, frantically producing logs. I'm going to be building a second woodcutter at some point fairly soon. That is um, going to become one of the newer priorities, because one won't be able to keep up. I can't remember the exact ratios, but it never hurts to have too many woodcutters, because you're going to always sell the cut logs with the traders when we get to building the trader. Now, I, I keep saying that I'm going to build a trader, and I still haven't actually gotten around to it yet. But our 10 times simulation speed is working very well. We've got everything is coming along quite nicely now. Our population is slowly growing. I mean, at the moment it's actually dropped a bit. We're now on 29 adults because we've had a few older people have passed away and they have not yet been replaced. So we've got zero laborers at the moment, which means that we're reaching a kind of choke point. We've got to hope that some of these students will get through school fairly soon so that they can start filling in some of the laborers' positions and then we can get some more children working on various jobs as well. So. This is going to be very slow. We're not going to get anybody moving around anytime soon because we've got zero laborers and that is going to slow us down until winter. Until winter. Uh, well, we're spring at the moment, so winter's a fair way off. Let's just see what the ages of people in these houses are. I'm sure there is actually a way to do it without looking. We don't have the town hall built yet. So there's an 8-year-old there. There's a 72-year-old vendor there. Two very old people there as well. And then down here, we've got, um, I'm looking for students. 20-year-old student, that one there, that student there, is very soon about to come into the workforce. I think it's at the age of 20. I thought it was 18, to be honest, but maybe it's the age of 20. So they will very soon become an adult. They will become a laborer. So these numbers here will change, and we'll have four, and we'll have 30. Well, actually, some of those, student, some of those children may move on as well. 17-year-old student there, so Nelly is not very far off. 
Um, what do we got? Reserve of tools is low and firewood. We've got a builder. Uh, we've got a 22 year old student. How old? How long do they stay in school for? I thought that they stayed as students until like the age of 20, but I mean, that's 22 years old. That's just utterly ridiculous. Focus the view on this citizen. Uh, educated, no. Well, they're currently attending school. It might just be because they're in school at the moment. And then when they come out of school, that'll be it. Unless they stay in school till they're 25. Maybe they do. I don't know. Ah, right. If someone's just come out of school there and she has just moved. So she's gone back to this. Is it this house? Annalisa, yes, she's now a labourer. We have finally got our labourer. Um, this house is now built. Cartes, a miner. And we've got a single builder living there. And we've got Cartes, a single miner living there. We've got 14 stone still waiting on. And as soon as that 14 stone is done, then all of our houses are built. And then hopefully we will get a population explosion. Well, it's not going to happen just yet. We've got quite a few people single elderly people living in these houses and this is what i mean about the choke points and you got you do have to kind of be aware of this happening you get an aging population you get this kind of clump of everybody dying all at the same time and suddenly you've got this like massive dearth of population and nobody is able to fill any of the jobs so that's something you've got to kind of take on board and be aware of as you go through right i'm just I'm not actually started this one yet. I'm just monitoring this up here. Now, we've got seven iron and we've got 21 tools. So, the amount of stored tools is starting to rise. Oh, dear. Ooh, 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 ooh. Citizen is sick. Uh, what's wrong with you? The citizen is sick. We don't have a hospital. I don't know if a citizen becoming ill when you don't have a hospital allows you to just ignore them becoming ill. I genuinely don't know. But, um... Looks like it's time to build this centre for infectious diseases. So our centre for infectious diseases is going to be this hospital right here. And I'm going to place it... Uh, I can't place it there. Looks like we're placing this one right next to the town hall. We're going to put that one there. There's the hospital. And we're going to hope that they will come along and build that one fairly quickly. We'll go right back up to 10 times speed. And we'll see if they spread their illness. Right, we've got two people sick now. We should have built the hospital. This is why you build the hospital early on. I don't know if disasters being switched off stops them from dying. I think it might actually stop. I think it does. Um, if they get really sick, it, it spreads around everybody and then they all die. And you really, really don't want that. That's a really bad thing to go and happen. Uh, reserve of firewood is low. Yes, we do need another log cutter. But at the moment, we don't have any spare logs. I got four of 52 in there. 62 on there. So that one's full of logs. That one's fine. So we will build the hospital. We've had that happen. We've had this whole situation. We've got four people sick now. We definitely did a hospital. Three, five. It's, it is moving up and down. We we're only down to with ooh, crumbs. 28 people. So the elderly are starting to die off, which is really, really bad. But we've got six children. It does mean, though, if the elderly are starting to die off in different places. Well, there's my timer going off. Um... Some of the elderly, the ones that are living by themselves in some of these houses, are going to move out. And that means... Oop, there's some ill people there. We've got an empty house. We've got a completely empty house there. We've got one person living... And that person's died as well. We're down to 27 people. So we are now actually start... This is actually starting to impact our workforce quite severely. We don't have a tailor anymore. That position has now been lost. Um, and this person has... Right, we've got 21 tools, so tools are okay. Coats were okay at the moment. We've got stored clothes are about... Uh, well, we've got 56 stored clothes. We don't have that tailor. We've got to wait for... We're literally just going to have to wait now until people are a bit older. And uh, we also need to cure these um, issues that we've got going on here. So we need to kind of prioritize. So what I'm going to do is first of all i'm going to shut down some of the farms i'm going well actually they've already done that for us we've got four farmers of six those are the ones that they've removed and the miner and the stone cutters i'm actually going to keep those exactly as they are i'm going to need a physician fairly soon but i don't have any laborers that i can swap over i could go down to just one builder for a little while in fact we may actually have to do that that might be the solution 
to our problem here. The hospital's going to take a while. 25 of 78 stone and 18 of 32 iron. But I've just about run out of time now. So I'm just going to let this simulation run for another year and just see what happens. And see if we can get any closer to building our hospital. And I really hope... I and mean, we do have more children coming along. We now have nine children, uh, which is a lot more than we did have, which is brilliant. So there's a child there has just been born. There's a young child there. We've got more children turning up in this house. These guys have been busy. Um, an old couple there who won't have any children. We've got one single elderly farmer there. That house is still empty. And another empty house. We've got one person living. Oh, she's, she's living on her own there. Hopefully she will have a husband move in with her soon. And then they will have some children. And down here as well. So we got more issues down here with a lack of... Um, well, we have, we have a lot of old people. We have a lack of firewood, which is serious. That person there is a student. They've got a long way to go for their travels for being a student. But nine children. So let's see what happens over the course of another year. Well, our population is slowly starting to build back up again. Um, we did drop down to 25 adults at one point, and that was only very briefly, though, and then it very quickly went to 26. We've now gone back to 27 adults, so we are still, we're still suffering a shortage. The farmers have filled everything up. If you have a look there, you can see that they are actually at maximum capacity. So anyone that's producing food is at maximum capacity, which is why the farmers are the first ones to sort of lose a few people. The other industries can keep running, except for the tailor. The tailor is the only one that we don't currently have anybody working there. Um, these farmers will bring a little bit more back in a minute. Stone has almost finished now. We've almost reached the point where we've got all of the stone in for our hospital. So I'd like to just see that one finished. Um, and we can get a physician if we can. We've got tools, we've got iron, we've got plenty. The iron's all filled up, the wood is all filled up. So we're actually getting a, a supply of firewood starting to build up as well. Well, stored firewood is very low, but if you look here... Uh, no, actually, I, I did thought it was on there, but it's not. Um, yeah, so we've got three iron tools in there, that's it. And so we've got four in storage in total, that's it. But the hospital has now got all of the materials needed, so we've got our hospital on its way. So I'm just going to quickly go here, and we have one labourer there, and I'm going to assign a physician. We currently have 27 people. That physician is not got anywhere to work, and then the next job that we're going to fill is the tailor, because we still have enough food from our four farmers. We don't need to worry about the other one. There we go. So we now have a hospital, although by the time the hospital was actually built, it turned out that we didn't really need it. It's not something that's essential. The people get ill, but they don't die because we don't have disasters. If we had disasters on and active on the map, then when people got ill like that, when a disease breaks out, um, everybody drops down dead. And it's really not very good because um, you, you don't want your workforce to just keel over like that. It's, it's not good. It's absolutely not the, it's not the way forward with life. Um, it's, it's, yeah, we really don't want that. Right, so we've got two people without tools, but we do have three um, stored tools. So that's only going. That's a very, very temporary situation. I think they just broke their tools while they were out. Um, oh, we're now up to 28 people, which means that we should be able to assign someone to being a tailor again. We've got one laborer there. We've got four farmers. That's it. So we were low on farmers. Fishermen are two, gatherers are two, hunters are two of three. The forest... Oh, foresters are low as well. We got one less forester than we originally had. So we're going to need another one of those. But I would rather rehire a tailor and not have a labourer working at the moment. And they can start getting their own materials. Because coats that we... I mean, we've still got 37 coats, but they are starting to drop. The number of coats is actually starting to drop, and that's not a good thing. So if we can just get those coats building back up... People dying of cold is far more likely if they don't have coats. You can They can survive the winter without fuel if they've got coats. If they don't have coats and they don't have fuel, then you're in trouble. You're in big, big trouble. Right, that really is all I've got time for today. So if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. They're all working excellently down there. They're all doing really well. 12 of 18 graves now. It's all those elderly people that have all died just recently. Um, in to, um, next week's episode, I am going to finish building this town hall, 
and then I am hopefully going to build an area here for traders. Now I'm probably going to build two of them so that when boat, the boats can come along and we can start trading things with people there which means that we can buy some animals and some fruit trees and things like that. But that's all to come next week and the week after so on and so forth. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.